All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, I've been reading this book here, Brew Like a Monk, uh, by a guy named Stan Hieronymus. Um, and I highly recommend this book to anybody that is interested in how Belgian monks brew their beer or how Trappist beer is a brewed or anything um, of that sort of thing. Really interesting read. So this book basically is about Belgian monks and how they brew some of the best beer in the world, the way that they've been brewing it for hundreds of years. So this guy basically went to some of those Trappist monasteries and breweries and spent a lot of time with the monks and uh, to the extent that they would allow him, um, they revealed some of their, their brewing uh, processes to him. And uh, I was just reading this for a while. Uh, I haven't made a Belgian beer in a long time. The last one was my quad, which I made uh, towards the holiday season last year. So uh, I've been kind of craving that. And I've also been making a lot of beers that are sort of towards the upper end of the percent ABV uh, beer spectrum. So I felt like it was time to get something that was not hoppy, not dark, not strong. And I was reading this book, and uh, you know, when you think of Belgian beers, you think a lot of Belgian doubles, Belgian triples, Belgian quadruples, you know, but you never really hear anything about a single. And uh, that's actually what is formerly known as a Belgian pale ale, or also known as a Belgian table beer, and that's what we're brewing today. So that is a relatively low strength, amber colored, easy drinking malt forward beer. Uh, that is made with Belgian yeast, but, uh, but it's not really heavily dependent on those classic Belgian yeast esters. They're there, but they're not super strong like they would be in, uh, I don't know, like a wood beer or a Belgian blonde or something like that. And I was reading this book, I found a really interesting fact. Uh, so a lot of the Trappist monasteries, they'll produce singles, Belgians, triple squads, um, and they actually will use the same exact mash for multiple beers. And for the strong one, they'll take the first runnings off of that mash to, and then they'll cut it off. And for their weaker beers, they'll use the second and third runnings. Uh, so they actually end up with a lower gravity wort, but from the same exact mash. So I found that really interesting, thought I wanted to share that with you guys. But that's effectively how the singles are made by the Trappist. They're, they're made by the last runnings. Uh, of those stronger beers and, and like the quads and, and the doubles. Well, obviously I'm not brewing a quad and a double at the same time today, so we can't quite do that. So we're doing our best to just kind of create a lower gravity wort with a little bit of uh, good caramel flavors in there, but not too much. Everything is restrained and balanced in a Belgian beer like this. Uh, and that's something that they do so well and have perfected over the centuries is that balance. Um, so we're shooting for a beer that is not too much of really anything. Um, it's just going to be something that's very easy and pleasant to drink um, and not very strong. So, so this is a recipe for the Belgian Pale Ale slash Belgian Style Single slash Belgian Table Beer. Um, but basically this is it. Uh, nine and a half pounds of Belgian Pilsner Malt, uh, three quarters of a pound of Cara Munich, a uh, quarter pound of biscuit malt, a quarter pound of melanoidin malt, and a little addition that I kind of came up with. Uh, just a tenth of a pound, so basically a splash of Special B. Special B is a very potent, very dark Belgian malt that gives doubles and quads that raisin-like character. Um, I am adding just a tad because if you see my red IPA video, I added a tenth of a pound of chocolate malt to that, and that had a profound impact on the deepness of the red color in that, as well as adding just a really cool hint of background flavor to the Red IPA's malt bill. So I'm hoping that I have a pretty similar result uh, adding just a tenth of a pound of Special B to this. Um, just a hint of background raisin flavor for some really good malt complexity. So we're hoping for a relatively low OG of 1.050. So hopefully this ferments down to somewhere between 4.5 and 5.5% alcohol, making it very easy and pleasant to drink. We're adding some spices to this. It's basically the same blend of spices I added to my Saison, uh, which was very good. And that's uh, uh, half an ounce of ginger and a quarter ounce of orange peel and a quarter ounce of coriander seed. Those are going in five minutes from the end of the boil. Uh, as far as hops go, it's gonna be three ounces of Styrian Gildings at 60 minutes and then one ounce of Styrian Gildings at zero minutes. Not a hoppy beer. It should purely be there for balance. So just a little bittering addition and something to round out the aroma. For yeast, we're using Y-Yeast 3522, the Belgian Ardennes yeast. 
This yeast should actually flocculate out pretty nicely and leave a good clean, clear beer at the end of this, which is part of the style. Um, it should also, as a result, not have uh, too extensive of those Belgian yeast aromas uh, and esters. So we want to kind of keep those under control if we can. So for water, it's going to be a balanced profile that's relatively heavy on calcium. So you got 86 parts per million of calcium, 11 parts per million of magnesium, 65 parts per million of sodium, 130 parts per million of sulfate, 100 parts per million of chloride, uh, 90 parts per million of carbonate, and then to achieve that, we have uh, six grams of gypsum, two grams of epsom, and three grams of calcium carbonate. So for a mash, we're gonna mash this for 90 minutes at 152 degrees. So we're gonna boil this for 90 minutes for two reasons. First of all, because we're using Pilsner malt. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we get rid of that DMS uh, that's in that malt. And also because a longer boil is really gonna bring out a lot more copper color uh, and actually you know, create some caramelization in the kettle, hopefully. So that'll be really good for the color of our beer. All right, so I'm eating up my mash water now. This is my uh, brewing salts edition. It's been dissolved in some hot water. So we're just gonna stir that in now. Okay, so our strike water has reached the appropriate temperature, so it's time to pull out the heat stick and go in. All right, so our mash temperature is reading about 152.5 degrees, right on target. So now we'll wrap this up and let it sit for 90 minutes. All right, so it's 10 minutes into the mash now, so it's time for a uh, pH check on uh, the mash pH. I'm using a pH strip because it's simple and easy. All right, so uh, looks pretty close to 5.5, I think. So that's good. Uh, that gives us uh, a mash pH that's about in the right region. All right, 90 minutes is up, so it's time to unwrap this and uh, check our mash temperature. All right, it's looking at about 148 degrees. So while this is heating up and I'm rinsing out the rest of my grain, uh, a little note on spices. So I do this pretty much for every Belgian beer that I brew, but it's really important. Um, so when you add spices to a beer, it's like five minutes from the end of the boil. Understand that less is always more, uh, especially if you're using ground spices like I am. So when I make the recipe, I put everything in grams or, or ounces usually, uh, and I'm talking about the whole spice. So in my case, I am using whole orange peel that I got from the brew store, whole coriander seeds, and ground ginger. So even though I say I'm adding like half an ounce of ginger, quarter ounce of coriander, whatever, uh, in reality I'm not adding half an ounce of ground ginger because that would be such a spicy beer that it would just be ridiculous. That's like half a, that's like half a container of ground ginger, so don't do that. 
when you look at the recipe, and I'll add like an equivalency to it anyway, understand that for ground spices, it's usually no more than a quarter teaspoon or half a teaspoon. So in my case, I'm using half a teaspoon of ginger. Just always remember that because like I said at the beginning, this beer is all about balance as most Belgian beers are. So if you tip the scales too much in terms of making a spicy beer, you're gonna regret that probably in time. All right, so as you can see, the boil has begun. So this is a 90 minute boil, once again, uh, and our hop addition is actually for 60 minutes. So we're not adding hops at the beginning, we're just gonna let it boil for 30 minutes first, and then we'll go ahead and add our 60 minute addition. All right, so our pre-boil original gravity samples cooled down, and it is about 1.034. All right, so it is now 30 minutes into the 90 minute boil, so it's time to add our 60 minute bittering addition, which is three ounces of Styrian Goldings. Make sure we got all that. All right, it is now 15 minutes from the end of the boil, so it is time to add some stuff. First of all, we're going to add uh, our chiller. Next, we're gonna add our Servomyces tablet, which is yeast nutrient. And then we're gonna crumble up some oral flock and add that in there. And uh, now we wait for another about 10 minutes, and uh, at that point we're gonna add our spices. So it's five minutes from the end of the boil, so here's my blend of spices. We're gonna add that right now. Okay, so the boil has ended, so it's time to shut off everything. Take out the heat stick. And shut off the burner. And it also means it's time for a zero minute hop addition, which is just one ounce of Styrian Goldings. Okay, so I'm cooling down everything right now. Uh, the brew day went pretty well. All things considered, uh, I had a really rough round of allergies for some reason today, so I was kind of like drowsy and out of it, and I still managed to pull off a decent brew day. So that's pretty good. So fermentation for this brew is not particularly complicated, which is nice, uh, relatively speaking for a Belgian. It's a standard ale fermentation at 65, 68 degrees. Anywhere in that temperature range is fine for like two or so weeks. Uh, this Belgian beer is not strong, so it does not require a long time uh, to bottle condition. So because I didn't add any simple sugars during the boil and we're not trying to squeeze as much fermentation out of it as possible, uh, we don't need to worry about ramping up the temperature gradually during the fermentation as we do with Belgian triples and quads. Uh, and golden strong ales. Uh, also because, you know, we're trying to keep the yeast esters more or less subdued and under control, uh, we're not trying to ferment this super hot like we would for like a Cezanne or, or something like that. So it's really kind of one of the easiest Belgian styles that you can make. So all things considered, I'm actually uh, pretty excited to see how this one turns out and best of all, it'll be ready very quickly. Okay, so the wort has cooled down to pitching temperature, so I'm going to go ahead and transfer it over to the fermenter and we're going to aerate it by splashing uh, all over the fermenter. So remember how I added spices to the boil uh, and you saw those chunks of bitter orange peel? Uh, well, they have firmly lodged themselves in the ball valve here uh, and kept me from transferring wort. So we're gonna have to figure out a workaround. 
So I think the only way that we can really do this uh, is to go old school and just straight up siphon this stuff. Alright, so I think I probably didn't get as much word as I wanted to out of there with the siphon. Uh, but it's alright, we got most of it. So, uh, noted, I guess, that the next time I, blow, I, I brew with large spices, I can't use the ball valve. Kind of sucks, but oh well. Anyway, we're gonna pitch our yeast now that it's good to go. Alright, so our original gravity sample is in, uh, it is a really nice color, kind of like a medium copper color, uh, really, really like that, uh, so hopefully that's how it looks in the glass, probably a little bit darker, but uh, the final reading is in, and it's reading about 1.048, uh, which is, well, that's pretty good, uh, within two gravity points of what we were targeting, and that makes it a really nice, easy drinking beer. Okay, so here is our final gravity. So it is looking about 1.009. So that's pretty good. Color looks great. Color leaves a little bit to be desired, but I'm thinking the longer it sits in the keg, the more it's gonna clear up. So I'm not really concerned about that too much. So let's go ahead and keg this. So the fermentation went very well, straightforward, no issues. Uh, the temperature was pretty steady the whole time, around 68 to 69 degrees, I think. Uh, Krauss and Rosen fell without any issues. It was actually pretty quick. So once it had completed fermentation, I went ahead and I transferred it to the keg. Now this is the first keg beer that I have. So it is on tap number one here. Uh, I built this kegerator the other weekend and uh, one of the best parts about that is that now that I don't have to wait for two weeks for my beer to actually condition in the bottle, it can actually be carbonated within a couple days. So me being the impatient type, um, I went ahead and force carbonated it by shaking the keg and hitting it with like 50 psi bursts of CO2 and it was ready the night that I put it in the keg. Uh, that's not the best method because, you know, the flavor of the beer is going to change over time. There's going to be things that change about it, but uh, it did work and um, I think it's still just fine to do that because this is a very basic, easy drinking, pleasant beer. So it's been on tap for a good week now uh, and it's a really, really nice beer. All right, so it's called Second Breakfast. It comes in at about 5.3% ABV. So it's a really nice night out tonight, so I figured I'd sit outside my porch and review this instead of uh, just staying inside. So uh, this is a couple minutes after the pour. As you can tell, the head kind of faded quite a bit, but uh, there's still a decent amount of lacing remaining on the surface. The color uh, is a deep orange, almost copper, really quite nice. Um, but as you can tell, not clear, not clear like it was earlier. So I think really unfortunately we just got a lot of chill haze in this particular brew which is a shame. Um, it's just gonna have to sit in the keg for a while before it gets completely clear, but I'm definitely not that patient. So as far as aroma goes, uh, it's actually very, very subtle. Um, there's not much aroma to this beer at all. Uh, the, really the only thing I get is just a whiff of the malt and then uh, a little bit of uh, pear ester coming up from the Belgian yeast. The body in the beer is actually very light. Uh, it doesn't stick around very long in the palate, but uh, the carbonation is a little strong. There's a little bite there, and I think that's from force carbonating the keg. Flavor's great. Um, <laughs> it's not. That's not much of anything. It's not really uh, very strong in any sort of flavor. Um, it's delicate, it's balanced, uh, and it's just, it's not the double, the triple, the quad, any of those other Belgian favorites that are so packed full of flavor. It's just very, very gentle. I like that. It's uh, got a nice citrus uh, hint up front from uh, the orange peel I put in there, as well as from the yeast, and uh, a little bit of a middle caramel biscuit note. And then you just kind of get a tiny bit of spice on top of everything, which is pretty nice. This is an exceptionally easy drinking beer. Um, these these go down quick. <laughs> it's just a very, very nice, easy to do, uh, 
pleasant to drink beer. Um, and I think I really did a pretty good job on this one, with the exception of the Jill Haze. If this would just drop out clean, then it would be perfect BPA. So in order to correct chill haze, um, you usually just have to be quicker about your chilling process uh, or add additional findings after you've boiled. Um, so I think what I'll probably do is start adding gelatin to the keg just to make sure that it's really good and, and bright when it comes out. So that's not a really big deal. Uh, just kind of annoying, that's all. So as far as numbers go, it's really like, for what it is as a style, it's probably good like six out of 10, but uh, it's a really, really nice beer to drink overall. Uh, and it's definitely more enjoyable than like my New England IPA, for example. So if you liked the video, please feel free to hit that like button. Uh, if you like watching me do what I do, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, there's a bell notification icon there that you can click so that uh, you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a new video, which is roughly twice a month, uh, sometimes more frequently, depending on how much I get to brew. If you decide to brew the beer, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any other sort of questions, comments, concerns, etc., as long as they're civil, feel free to drop those in the comments below. Also, don't feel obligated, but uh, I'm on Instagram now, so I'm at the apartment brewer. Feel free to follow me on Instagram if you want to catch more frequent updates about what I'm doing or what I'm brewing. I'll usually post on Instagram every couple of days, and that way you can know what kinds of brews are coming up well ahead of schedule. So as always, thanks to my current subscribers. I'm going to continue enjoying this lovely evening and uh, this pleasant table beer. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. So, cheers.